Hey there, Rocco here. I hope you're doing well and welcome to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to be starting off a little series on the different uh, light options that we've got in DAS 3D. Anywhere ranging from set lights, such as spotlights and point lights, and including in this video's topic, distant lights, right the way through HDRI lighting and onto emissive lighting. So what you want to do, if you, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell down below so that when these videos do drop, you don't miss any anything and also while you're at it give this video a little like and share it about a little bit will you uh what that does is it tells youtube i'm actually a better youtuber than what i actually am and uh we trick the little algorithm into sending more viewers this way uh anything like that helps the channel out a little bit so appreciate it if you do one of those two things or both right uh, as you can see i've got a little scene loaded in uh, and we have our model dressed here in a let's say a fairly casual fashion uh and today we're using catalina uh and as usual also we've stuck some hair on the top of the head uh you can be able to get the links to to all the assets in this scene down below if you fancy anything that you see or you know you want to recreate this tutorial exactly as i'm doing it uh so anyway as i've mentioned what we're going to be doing we're going to be taking a look at distant lights uh that, that we use today now at the moment there are no actual lights in this scene so if I flip over to NVIDIA iRay all that we get uh, when that does its stuff is just a little black silhouette of our model. There's no lights, there's nothing else in the scene, no ambient light, no HDRIs, nothing like that. We're just lighting the scene up with a distant light or we will be for a moment. So at the moment everything is dark so we'll head on back to texture shaded and we'll move on to adding a distant light into our scene. And the way that we do that is we come up to create, click on create, and then on new distant light, as we can see, we click OK, and we get this little option box come up. Now we can apply the default settings, and what that does, that will create the light source at the 0, 0, 0 XYZ coordinates within our scene, basically where our model's standing. Uh, the second option, we can apply the active viewport transform at our camera. So what that means we create the light source at the camera that we're looking through at the viewport where we are. And the final option is the copy selected item, which in this case is doing the same thing. Or if we had it selected on Catalina itself, it would put the, the light at a XYZ position. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the apply active viewport transforms, as you can see, and I'm going to hit accept. Incidentally, if you want to set a distant light up quickly, if you've got the option bars up the top, it's this little option here, the, like a bulb, I suppose, with the light emanating off it. Uh, so anyway, we've added the distant light and absolutely nothing changes. But if we were to come over from the camera and go onto our perspective view and then rotate that around a little bit, we can see, as I say, the distant light has been added right in the position of where our camera are, and it's indicated by those three arrows that you can see there so if we now come back to our camera as we can see there and go back again into the nvidia iray we get a very dimly lit model in our scene so to fix that with our distant light selected uh what we need to do is to come down to our lights tab which you'll find down here under the parameters shapes pose and services and lights tab and if we click on that we, we see we got a few little options here down the side there's only really a couple in here that you really need to be aware of uh, the main one being luminous flux down there uh, which gives an indication of how much light is put into the scene measured in lumens as you can see in brackets there the higher this number the more light and the brighter the scene will be, the lower it is conversely, therefore it will be darker and dimmer. Now the default here is at 1500, as you can see. And what I generally start out by doing is giving it a click and adding another zero onto that to make it 15,000. So when we do that and let IRA do its stuff, the preview, you can see it's, it's now a little bit of a brighter scene. Uh, maybe not bright enough, so what then I'll do is I'll go in and I'll stick another zero on the end of it to take it up to 100 and 50,000. Now it's probably a little bit too bright. So what I'll do, I'll just then knock it down to 100,000 and that should be about right, I would guess. For our purposes, that's fine. Obviously, you know, you can play with that number as, as much as you want to get the look that you actually want. Uh, now, as you can see, when you look at that, uh, the using the, the distant light actually gives a fairly uniform light into our scene. Uh, 
everything gets hit with the same amount of light. It doesn't matter if there was something deeper into the scene, further away from the light source, it would still get hit with the same amount of light. However, this comes with a little bit of a problem. If we come back into perspective mode and uh, flick back around to our character, and then we rotate around a little bit, you can see that anything not directly lit or in the direct lighting of the, the, the distant light gets plunged into the deepest, darkest shadow that you can get. Uh, there's no actual real way around that. It just creates these really dark shadows that isn't getting hit by light. Maybe, you know, some people talk about distant light. You can use them as a sun substitute. And you can with a little bit of playing around, but something straight out of the box... These really dark shadows, you know, it, it makes it difficult to to use as part of a, you know, accurately in a scene. Certainly, if you're trying to represent a sun model, there are other ways to do that, which we'll get onto in another video. Uh, so, if we come back to our camera, you know, as you, once more, the important thing to realise is that the distant light gives this really flat, uniform lighting. As you can see there, it lights the character up well, but it's all flat, it's all uniform. There's no discrepancies in the light. The second option on back down on our light tab uh, that's important is obviously the colour of the light. Now, if we open up the colour selector, as you can see here, uh, we can choose a, a bright, uh, sorry, a really dark colour or a strong colour up at the top, or we can choose the pale colours. I would actually advise if you're going to use the colour this way to use, you know, one of the paler, lighter colours down here. You know, if we come into maybe down here, a bit of a yellowish light and we click OK, you can see she'll just get that little bit of a yellow tint uh, to her. Whereas if we go up the top end and go up to this green, it's a really strong green, you know, it really does now start to, to colour the model in. And if we went up to Summit Blue, you know, if you if that's the type of look you were looking for, then obviously that's fine, spot on, crack on with it. But uh, you're going to get your best results if you go down the bottom end to where the colours are a little bit paler and a little bit subtler, just to create these different little lighting experiences, as you can see. Now, of the other options that we have over here on the light tab, intensity, as the name might suggest, causes the light to be more intense. Now, we can only go at a base up to 200 percent but as you can see it just makes that light a little bit more intense or if we go the other way it makes it a little bit less intense now there is a difference between intensity and, and the luminous flux but uh, for our purposes we just need to know it just makes it a little bit brighter and a little bit more dimmer if that's what we choose to do once we've settled on the looms uh, the final thing that we probably need to do, go along with is is looking at temperature which is the temperature of the light now Again, the temperature affects the colour and it kind of works similar in the way to the colour, but it basically produces a range from red at the low end up to bright, bright shine and really bright blue light at the, at the far end. So the colder that we set it, the more ready, as you see, the, the image will go. And the higher uh, we go up that scale, you get a more bright, bluey coloured light. Uh, it's something to do with physics and all that type of stuff. It's, it's not something I'm an expert on. But uh, the mid-range of 6500 will produce a nice, solid white light for you. Uh, and overall, that's all the, that you really know need to know for the settings that you can use on the distant light. There's one other thing, though, that you need to know. Uh, if we come back out to the perspective mode once more, and we just have a spin around. Uh, and I'll go into texture mode for this as well. One thing you need to be aware of, when you set the distant light in its position, yes, you can move it around with your normal sliders if you wanted to do so. But one thing that you need to know when we come back into our camera and, and back into NVIDIA iRay, the movement of the actual light along the X or along the Y won't actually change anything with the light. And the reason for that is because the distant light is, as it's saying, the light is at such a distance that any little movements on these scales, and bear in mind, we are moving in feet and inches and, and whatnot here. Uh, any of these movements that we do isn't really going to affect the light on this distant light. Try imagine moving the sun. If we move the sun a few metres to the right, it's not going to change the light and down on Earth. You'd have to move the sun an absolutely massive distance to be able to change things. However, one thing that we can do is with rotate and if we actually start to rotate the camera I'll, I'll do it on the y axis here we can actually get a change 
in the light, as you can see. You know, we've obviously we've rotated it a bit that way, and if we keep on going round, we can just come all the way around eventually. Now I know it's iris is taking a little bit of time. And what you can actually do with the rotations and with the distant light is you can set up some fairly I mean, that's not a good example, but you can set up some good uh, dramatic lighting effects at times. Add another light in there and, you know, you might be able to, uh, you know, come up with some decent decent looks for Amber. Look, it's fairly fairly dramatic. I haven't messed about with it much, but you're getting a dramatic lighting effect there. Uh, so, yes, the translations and whatnot won't actually make any difference, so there's no point moving them. And likewise, if you are going to get any sort of change in the lighting, you, then you've got to come down to the rotations. I mean, if I go rotating up, oh, that's probably gone too far. Rotating it up and down, you know, we'll just get different effects and different things that we can do. But we can't move the light once it's set, so make sure you set it in the right place that you want it. Uh, and that's about it. That's about it for distant lights. Uh, there's not really that much more to that they can do or what they can do i guess there's some people do talk about using them as a sun substitute but you know there are other ways of doing it there really are better ways which we'll get onto in another video uh one thing that you can use a distant light for which is decent is that you can set it up to be a low level ambient light in your scene and then when you add other scenes they all complement each other and the distance light as i say is just acting as that ambient light and source in our scene uh but again you know there's other lights and other lighting options that we've got that can probably do a better job than that also. Uh, but I'm sure we, someone somewhere will be able to find a good use for distant lights. And, you know, it, it has its uses. You've just got to play around and experiment and see what it is that you want. Uh, but there we go. That's it. Distant lights. Uh, I hope you've gotten something out of this video. Uh, and I hope you've picked something up from it. I hope so. I really do. Uh, if you have, then like I've already said, if you, you wouldn't mind giving me a like down below and subscribing if you haven't already, as it really, really helps out the channel. Uh, and also as well, if you've got any questions, whether it's about this this subject, distant lights, about Daz 3D in general, drop them down in the comments below and I'll get back to answering them as soon as I possibly can. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye now.